Alright guys and ghouls, happy Halloween and today we'll be taking a look at horror themed games on the Amstrad CPC. Now a few years ago I did a similar video but the YouTube copyright bully boys muted the video because of the music I had played in the background so it's now time to resurrect this with an all new video. <laughs> Now, uh, this will be split into three parts with roughly 30 seconds per game. Part one will focus on just general horror games featuring uh, ghosts, monsters, demons, vampires, etc. Part two, we'll look at games based on uh, horror movies. And lastly, in part three, we'll look at some honorable mentions that perhaps don't quite fit the horror mold or category but are worthy to be mentioned. So without further ado, let's kick off with part one. So we're going to kick things off with a couple of arcade conversions. First up, the classic Ghosts and Goblins from Capcom and Elite Software. Uh, I really like this. Um, it has some pretty decent graphics and I love the music which you can hear in the background which I will reuse throughout this video at points. Um, it's a very interesting push scrolling mechanic here which I think works really well. A couple of negatives though, it is missing some levels and when you get hit you don't run around in your underpants which is a real shame. Other than that, I really like this. I um, wish I could say the same about the sequel, Ghouls and Ghosts, which was handed over to US Gold. Um, the graphics are appalling. Um, although it does have the special weapons and when you get hit you do run around in your underpants like in the arcade. Um, special weapons are there, I think all the levels are there and bosses, but it's just so crudely implemented. But it's a uh, worthwhile horror game. Now a real true horror game for the Amstrad Night Under. Ignore the appalling music, but you control Dracula there. And you can suck the blood of people, turn into a vampire bat, and you can even turn into a werewolf bizarrely. So yeah, go around to each level, find all the keys, all the scrolls, um, and get to the exit. But watch out for Van Helsing, he's throwing uh, stakes at you. A really good game to check out if you're a horror fan. Another one being Cauldron. This time you're controlling a witch on a broomstick. And you've got to defeat the Pumpkin King. This is a really, really fun game, however it is absolutely rock hard and the platforming sections are insanely difficult, insanely difficult. So much so they actually, it actually kind of spoils the game because it just ends up being too hard. But Cauldron did return in another sequel, Cauldron 2 The Pumpkin Strikes Back and this time we're controlling the pumpkin. As you can see he's bouncing around there and it has this really strange bizarre bouncing gameplay mechanic and I just can't get used to it. I, I really don't like this game um, and I have no idea what you're supposed to be doing in it but quite a lot of people do seem to like this so there you go. But Cauldron did return in the, in the early 90s, one of the last games ever released on the Amstrad, Super Cauldron and it really is super, it looks absolutely gorgeous and um, Whilst it's turned into a bit more cutesy and cartoony, and the game's really big, um, lots of exploration, and lots of good fun. Check out the long play my channel of this. But yeah, Super Cauldron. Ah, the first game on our list that has a 15 certificate, because some of the gruesome and grisly images in it. However, it's only a text adventure, and a rather strange one at that. Whatever you do, don't eat the food, then close the window in your bedroom because you choke to death. And this is kind of one of the screams um, you will expect to find in the game. There you go. That would earn a 15 certificate in the 80s. Moving on to Chiller from Richard and David Darlin, those who set up Codemasters of course. Um, a very very old game it's a rather strange platforming thing where you it's really hard to work out which platform you can actually jump on but basically collect all the crosses in the level 
and then rescue the girlfriend. Unfortunately, the Amshed version, it's impossible to complete. Check out the video on my channel all about it. Ghost Hunters from the Oliver Twins, those who did, of course, the Dizzy series. We're in a spooky castle and you can shot your character but the interesting gameplay mechanic and notice you've got a gun sight there which you can move around independently and shoot the monsters on the screen or you can have a second player who controls just the crosshairs and you control the character a really really interesting game and one of the best co-op two player games on the Amstrad ah now one of my favourites Werewolves of London by night you're a werewolf by day a human and you've got to find the uh, people that cursed you and kill them so you can return to your human form permanently but what's really cool is day changes to night, night changes to day and of course you change along with it as you can see here of course uh, watch out for the coppers though right already on to part two horror movie licenses and of course we've got to kick things off with Friday the 13th Lots of weapons to pick up, and uh, Jason is stalking the camp counsellors, and you've got to kill Jason. There he is, about to kill someone. But you've got to find Jason first, though, because he's in disguise. This time, he's disguised as a girl. Hmm, a couple of grisly images, and you can fight Jason there. I guess this takes after part five, where there isn't really Jason in it. Now, not many people know that George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead was released as a zombie in Europe, and UBISoft cashed in on this with their own game of the same name, following the plot of the movie really, really closely. Uh, you're in the shopping mall, uh, and you've got to refuel the chopper and escape from all the uh, zombies. And there's uh, four different characters to control, and it's a really good uh, and innovative game. And, of course, we've got zombies! Hurrah! But on to the Alien series. There's three Alien games on the Amstrad and uh, not many people know about Alien. Um, it's actually a really, really good game. It's very basic and it's very old. Um, and you could basically control your characters and obviously you've got to get rid of the Alien uh, and escape. I may actually do a long play of this one day. We do actually get to see the Alien at some point though. Moving on to Aliens from Electric Dreams. There's two Aliens games. This is the UK version and probably the best. It's kind of like a first person perspective where you control your six colonial marines. Well, actually five including Ripley. And you obviously got to clear the base of Aliens and get to the Queen and destroy her. Really, really cool atmospheric game. Well worth checking out. And you've got to keep track of all your members. They could be getting killed by Aliens at any point. But there was a US version of Aliens which was also released. And this features different types of levels. Here's the dropship level. And here's you running around the base of Xenomorphs. Uh, unfortunately, it's really crudely done, especially the graphics. Um, it's okay for a blast. And here's you fighting the alien queen at the end. All rather crude, though. Yes, it's now time for the Ghostbusters series on the Amstrad. Free game to check out. Here's the original, of course, and David Crane. You want to check out the uh, disc version though, it has enhanced graphics and it has the uh, Zool ending as well when you get past the Marshmallow Man. But yeah, go around the town, bust some spooks, all good fun. Oh well, the driving sections are completely pointless. Ghostbusters 2 from the Oliver Twins who did the Dizzy games. And it's really good. Follows three sections from the movie. We're in the uh, shaft here, we control the Statue of Liberty on the second level and then we're in the museum on the third level defeating Vigo the Carpathian. The graphics are stunning as is the music, the gameplay is really fun, this is an absolute classic. Especially this level which looks great. Now there's a third Ghostbusters game, the real Ghostbusters which is an arcade conversion and based on the comic books of course. Which are based on the movie, 
Uh, so I think I can include this here. Um, it's okay. Uh, it's 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 a fun for a short blast. Yeah, bust the spooks. Defeat the individual guardian. Get the key. Escape. Move on to the next level. Uh, repeat and repeat. Okay. Moving on. Adam's family from Ocean Software. Based on the movie, of course. And uh, this time you are controlling Gomez as he has to rescue all the members of the Adams family who have been imprisoned. This game is massive, so big in fact it's a 128k only game. And it is also ridiculously hard, it's one of the hardest full price platformers I've ever played. Good luck finishing it. Nightbreed, uh, based on one of my favourite movies from Clive Barker. Not many people enjoy this game. I think you really need to have seen the movie and have enjoyed the movie to appreciate this game. It does actually follow the, the movie quite well, actually. I think it looks really gorgeous and really nice, and there's lots of great monsters and details and things happening. It's not too hard to complete as well, but you have to have seen the movie, I think, really, and read the instructions. Arachnophobia! From Disney Software, bizarrely. I think it was actually uh, published or distributed by Titus in the UK and Europe. Um, this is actually a really, really good game. It's kind of like very similar to Ghostbusters in that you, you drive around uh, the town, pick a building, get rid of all the nasties. And there's long play my channel of this. Nosferatu the Vampire. There are, this is based on a movie. I think it's a Werner Herzog movie, which I didn't rate very highly. But anyway, this is a 3D isometric game in the style of Head Over Heels. And all those others. Um, I haven't played this much. Um, I'm not a fan of this type of game. But I'm told it's actually reasonably quite good and quite atmospheric. Now with this one, I undernod whether to include it or not. Is it really a horror? Well it has horror in the title and I suppose the movie does play on a few horror tropes as does the stage show. Run around the castle and avoid uh, the Frankenfurter because he'll nick your clothes. And you'll have to run around naked until you can find them again. One of the few games uh, on the Amstrad which features nudity. Mm. But as you can see, it's really crudely drawn and it's, a, it's really difficult. Predator! Um, a lot of people hate this game, got really, really poor reviews. I have a strange liking for this because it does actually follow the movie quite closely. Just these shooting sections are really poor. The Predator is chasing you and it even switches to the night vision there, which is really nicely done. But if you, as you're watching this, you'll probably notice quite a few things from the movie. There's Arnie jumping into the waterfall, coming out covered in mud and fighting the Predator, unarmed without a machine gun. Very clever actually, just poorly implemented in places. Now with the sequel, Predator 2, um, it takes a much more simple approach and it's kind of like an Operation Wolf style shooter. Yes, that is the Predator in the background there, that red outline, he's in, basically invisible. Um, it's an okay shooter, it's just like the crosshair moves really clunkily doesn't move very smoothly at all which makes aiming rather a pain in the arse. Moving on though, it's text adventure time with gremlins um, and this is not very good at all um, it's really really laggy typing things in which makes things even more frustrating uh, the parser is really crap and it's probably well worth avoiding. Um, you can so easily die I'm just going to pick up a flashlight here, and apparently I'm dead already. Play again? No thank you. Let's move on to the uh, sequel, Gremlins 2. From Elite Software and Toposoft, a Spanish programming house and team. Um, it looks quite nice. Um, it seems to play okay, but it's a little clunky for a platformer. But it does follow the plot of the movie quite well. Um, if you remember the end of the movie, you'll recognise the end of the game here. Which is quite nicely done. There's a long play of this game in my channel, check it out. And we're saving the worst for last, I think, really, with Jaws. Oh dear. Uh, well, you control that tiny little submarine there. 
and apparently you've got to find four parts of a super gun which is at the bottom of the ocean but Jaws is lurking around the top, there he is and once you've got the four parts of the gun apparently you can then kill him utterly rubbish and is best avoided and that brings to a close the horror movie licenses section let's move on to part three so part three are my honourable mentions. These are the games that have horror elements to them, but perhaps not as strong a horror theme as the games featured in parts one and two. Now this is Frankenstein Jr., sometimes known as Bride of Frankenstein, by the same uh, guy that brought you Werewolves of London. But it's a little bit more cutesy and cartoony, which is why it's in this list and not the uh, first one. But if you enjoyed Werewolves, you'll enjoy this one. Next up, um, this game I've included because of all the gory, grisly deaths that can happen to you in the game. It's probably the most gory game out of the whole list. Yes, it looks really, really crude, and for a platforming game it's not very good, but look at all the blood. Ah, <laughs> oh, Roland on the ropes. I had to include this. I mean, it's got vampire bats, skeletons, mummies, ghosts, and all sorts of stuff. Um, and when I was about five or six years old, when I encountered the skeleton for the first time, I was really scared by it, and I had to turn the game off. Bless. But if we include this one, I suppose we've got to include O oh, Mummy as well. Uh, why not? <laughs> it's got mummies. Yeah, so uh, moving on, arcade conversion, Altered Beast. This has the worst frame rate I've ever seen for a full price Amstrad game. Utterly dreadful, uh, appalling graphics, crap animation, uh, just rubbish all around. But it's just that lag. And speaking of lag, on our next game, Space Gun, the lag between firing your gun, the bullet actually hitting an enemy, and uh, anything happening is staggeringly bad. A shame because it actually looks rather okay. This was actually planned for the GX4000 I believe but only released in France for the 6128 Plus machine. A bit of an oddity. Now the longest titled game in the list, The Astonishing Adventures of Mr. Weems and the She-Vampires. This rather average gauntlet clone is only worthwhile remembering for the title and the box art on the budget release from Alternative Software which is rather saucy. Hmm. Another budget release though uh, is Strike on the Crypts of Trojan uh, and if you had a plus machine you could unlock all those beautiful extra colours which you can see happening there. This is from the same guy that did Switchblade and is kind of a follow up and is well worth checking out even on the normal Amstrad CPC range. Myth I've included um, because well, we've got skeletons and all kinds of different mythical creatures and scary monsters. Um, it's a really, really good game to check out. Second to last game is Dr. Scrimes Spook School. I have no idea what to do in this. I only found out about it quite recently. It looks quite nice, um, but I can't tell you much about it. But it's an Amstrad exclusive game, wasn't released on any other system. Hmm, which is nice. So we're going to end on this on a high with Orion Prime, a game released only a couple of years ago, and it's a uh, it's an adventure game in a space station. But there's uh, hideous monsters and creatures lurking about, and is the one of the most atmospheric and uh, scary games on the Amstrad. It's the atmosphere, which is key, and and is always key with anything to do with horror. Um, so there you go, Orion Prime, and that is my Amstrad CPC Horror Games video. I hope you enjoyed it. If I've missed any games, let me know in the comments below. And uh, please uh, like and subscribe. And remember guys, happy Halloween, and don't have any nightmares. <laughs>